Four Lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you. I'm your regular Wednesday evening host here at Body Bags. It is week 444. That means it is theme week. It is vis-a-vis -vis week. It's when we take two films, we compare them against one another, and then we decide which one we think should be on top of the other, right? I thought I knew where I was going for quite a while, but then I started to change my mind. I started to go to one direction, then I revert, went into another direction. I started to come back. I looked out. I, I just, finally, I just decided, you know what? It's Wes Craven's last house on the left and Otto Lado's last stop on the night train or whatever title you know it by. 72 film, 75 film, U.S. film, Italian goodness but which one who's to say now the only reason that said screen is up there is because my last house on the left i have the blu-ray there's no real set screen so i had to put on something that had a set screen so don't automatically think i'm going italy we'll just have to wait and see so what, what so what is it both movies right are rooted deep down in ingmar bergman's the virgin spring uh, if you've never seen that movie, holy freaking crap, you need to, man. Max von Sydow, man, plays the father. If you're familiar with Last House or even Adelaide's film, and you're familiar with the basic construct of the story, uh, you will have a much better context for both of them. If you watch Igmar's film, um, it is it is it is such a complex film. So many themes, so many things being dealt with, but basically. Uh, it is it is medieval Sweden. It is the heathen heathenism is giving way to a new uh, new Christianity is basically pushing heathenism by the side. The church is 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 being lifted up in Sweden, and so there is a lot of uh, tension between you know allowing one thing to fade off and embracing something new right so there's this working tension right and you got this family this medieval medieval family as i said max von Sydow plays the father and they're gonna send their daughter she's gotta run candles it is sunday uh run candles and try to make it to the church by you know time for mass well she won't make it uh and she's a virgin hence the title virgin spring right She's going to run, she'll take her, uh, sort of, she's, uh, the girl that she goes with her is like, she treats her as her sister, so she's like, she's like a foster child, she's more of a servant in the house, uh, and, and she wishes nothing more than ill will of her, of her actual sister, uh, and there's, there's a lot there going on, bottom line is, they go out there together, and they end up splitting apart, and the young the young virgin girl will run into two thugs and they're and, and the, i guess it's the younger brother or whatever young kid anyways she gets raped right brutally gets raped ends up being murdered and left just left there so they pick up and as they're heading you know on their way wherever uh they literally right run aground on the home of the daughter that they have killed right now they don't know this now they have the general direction and understanding where the house somewhat where the direction lies but they don't know where the house is right so uh so they're there and what happens is and i'm not going to go much further than this but to say that uh one one of our thugs here has the has the clothes some of the clothing that was ripped off of the poor girl now that now she was dressed up appropriately special uh you know she's going to church or this is something special she wanted to wear so mom would know what this is right so when one of the thugs tries to pass it off onto the mom to sell to her she realizes immediately it's her daughter and her daughter has probably something has probably happened well it doesn't take long for the other uh the servant girl who is treated as sort of, you know, a, a stepsister uh, to the girl. She comes home and she tells the dad everything. By morning, uh, the break of dawn, dad goes in and him and mom. Well, dad, basically, mom's there to watch. Dad goes in and he deals with them. And he deals with them harshly, right? Killing them 
all, even the little boy. But we're, we're left then at the end with, you know, when they go to retrieve the body, the dad who is, you know, mom has completely embraced the Christian faith. Dad is sort of like, well, lukewarmish, sort of. Eh. And he's left there. It is one of the most powerful scenes, right? One of the most powerful scenes. And he does not understand how God could allow such tragedy to move into his household. And so in spite of that, he promises and makes a vow that on the site of the death of his daughter, he will build a church for this God that he just does not understand. And so there, there's just a lot of freaking stuff going on there. Now you quickly move into, you got Wes's film and we know this story, right? The daughter, uh, the daughters, or is it the daughter and a friend, I think, they go off to a concert in the city. They run afoul of Krug uh, and Sadie and, of course, Junior, right, uh, and Weasel, right? And uh, and they run afoul, and we know what happens, right? They take advantage of them. They rape them. They kill them. They end up taking them off into the woods, not having any clue. They end up having more to do with them, and then they ultimately end up killing them. With their car cranks out right they end up at the parents house and it's only because the one girl gave her peace necklace to one of uh to i think uh, uh i think one weasel is it or one of the guys mom sees it she starts to put one and one together and they they go out and they find the girls right they come back they deal with these they deal with these guys right and the other one, Aldo's movie, you've got two girls. Uh, they're coming home for Christmas from Germany to Italy, right? And uh, they run afoul of Blocky uh, and Curly, two guys, right? Well, here's the spin. Blocky goes to basically assault this girl, this blonde. Well, we find out that this blonde is actually more manipulative than he is. And so she basically just is all right with everything that he's wanted to do to her, right? Which kind of spins his head. Well, then she sort of becomes the manipulator or the real true antagonist uh, who's basically, you know, as a like a puppeteer, causing these two to go further than they even would probably go. And that's where Blackie will actually have it. By the way, the horse in the Virgin Spring is named Blackie, and I thought this, and there's a lot of crossover with names and stuff. But um, but Blackie will have a change of heart, but she won't let him. And the other guy won't let him. Now, he's all drugged up and stuff, too. And ultimately, they'll kill the girls, and they'll throw them off the train. Well, one, actually, I'm sorry, one jumps out of the train to escape them, ends up falling to her death. The other one has already died. They take her and just toss her and all her belongings out. When the train reaches the, the train station, uh, mom and dad are there to pick them up. They're nowhere to be found. But guess who's in the station? One has an injury that needs to be dealt with, but they don't want to go to the hospital. So mom and dad, not knowing where their daughter is or her friend, decide to take them back to their home. Treat the injury, be gracious people and you know and these and that's the one thing all three movies have in common charity has is being given on all front and is being repaid with just the the most devilish devilish sin right they take them back well it doesn't take long before they hear on the radio that these two girls one of them has been named and they know it's it's their daughter dad decides take things into his own hands he goes finds his rifle and boom He's on it, dealing with him. Now, here's the spin. And I do want to say this. It is a spoiler, right? We find out, not only do we know the girl's true intention, the mom and dad do not know the girl's true intention. And so they think she is just uh, an unwitting, is sort of just a bystander who's been dragged along with this. Also on the train, a peeping Tom who's looking into the cabin, what these guys are doing. He ultimately gets sucked in, but he ends up escaping and getting out of there. But he will be the anonymous caller that will call the police station telling them, what's up, right? So there's a lot of different moving parts here, right? So so in the end of uh, Last Stop, at the end of that, the girl, it's, it's left unknown. You don't know what happens to her. As far as we know, she gets off because they don't know what she has done. Okay, so you've got three movies you got the virgin spring which ultimately inspires Wes craven 
to his absolute, absolute classic masterpiece of freaking grindhouse freaking terror. That is The Last House. And then you got a couple years later, Adelaide, inspired by Wes, but also probably inspired by Virgin Spring, to give his own appeal, right? So where do these two lie? Well, ultimately in the end, I think I have to, uh, I, I, I think I have to, uh, as much as I admire Wes and I admire this movie, and I watched this movie as a kid way too freaking young, I'm going to have to run with Adelaide's last stop. And here's why. It, it's, you know, the scope. You got Ennio Marconi on the on the score. The scope of the film is so big. These two girls are traveling from Germany to Italy. A lot of the scenes are on a train. Uh, just the cinematography. By the way, the cinematographer on this film for Adelaide, he shot uh, Pink Floyd's live concert live at Pompeii, which is freaking outstanding. Um, so you got the wide sc scope of the film, the score, and but the ingenious of taking a couple characters and twisting them a little bit to to just kind of I don't know make the story a little bit more interesting towards the end and and giving us a little bit more thought I guess now there is something to be thought about in Last House obviously but you know by the end the dad is left absolutely distraught the chainsaws in his hand. Everything the mom has done some cruel things, but in Adelaide's film, mom is the one trying to tell you know get the dad to back off, don't do it, don't kill him, don't kill him. The, enough violence has already been shed. He goes through it and does it anyways. Uh, so you got that complexity stuff, comp, you know, going on there, right? So I just think this movie looks, it looks polished. It's 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 just, I don't know. For me, man, for me, I. I really dig this film. And so, I mean, I think we're going to go ahead and put this a little bit on top. Um, Bullshit, one on top of the other. Yeah, anyways. Um, on, on top of uh, Last House. Um, I love Wes. I truly do, Rip. We all love Wes Craven. But this is this is where I, I'll give Adelaide uh, his due. And uh, I do think uh, I do think he did a uh, supreme job with this. Um, some good stuff there, some good stuff there, but I have to say though, you really do need to watch the Virgin Spring. It really does give you a much fuller understanding and, and, and context to both Wes's film and Adelaide's film, right? Uh, plus it is, I, I think it won, uh, Academy, uh, best foreign picture or foreign language, I think, but this is Igmar Bergman, right? This is Max von Sydow, man, right? And uh, it is, man, that movie is freaking, I I'm telling you, I think when the mom in the Virgin Spring realizes she she's holding the clothes of her dead daughter, that I think trumps either of the scenes in the, in the, in the two later movies that will come. I mean, it, it just, the emotion without being really shown just comes off of her and you just know, man, Game is freaking on. Uh, two very powerful films. Actually, three, right? Virgin Spring, which is part of the Criterion Collection. Uh, so just know that. So you got Wes Craven's Last House, 1972. Adelaide's Last Stop on the Night Train, 1975. For our purposes here, again, one last time, I'm just going to give it to Adelaide. And for me, this film, man, edges out uh, for the reasons I already said, man. Uh Plus, Maricone, come on, man. Maricone, the score alone, man, it's pretty good. Anyways, here we go on vis-a-vis, -vis, man, the rest of the week. And as we've already seen, we'll see what uh, we'll see which movies come out on top of one another throughout the week. As always, as always, we end these things off with Go Bills. This is not a dream.